Welcome back. Donald Trump started the week riding pretty high, but it seems he's kind of been crashing back down to earth and hard. Uh, let me take you through the week in like a nutshell. Uh, on Monday, the Trump team was celebrating because the Florida judge put the Mar-a-Lago investigation on hold. Um, that is until the special master could go through all the secret and top secret documents that were seized um, at Mar-a-Lago. But now that decision is in jeopardy because the Justice Department appealed that ruling that Judge Eileen Cannon handed down on Monday. And they're doing it for two reasons. And uh, this is where things get a little crazy. Number one, the DOJ says that the documents that were found at Trump's resort do not belong to him, that they're presidential records, not his personal papers, and that he had no right to have them in the first place, right? So case closed. You, you can't say that they're yours. You can't file this, you know, this whole business about a special master. But number two was what really got me, uh, because it's kind of scary. They say that Donald Trump still might have more top secret documents somewhere else. Okay, I I'm sorry, but that, to me, that is a shocking revelation. You know, there's already been a raid. They got 11,000 documents, right? They retrieved more than 11,000 pages of governed documents, right? But they still said in this appeal that a special master would delay uh, or a delay of a special master would impede the efforts to identify the existence of any additional classified records that are not being properly stored. Ding, 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 bells went off. It's unnerving. It's also a big problem because this week alone, we learned that Trump had a document describing foreign government's nuclear capabilities that were stored in the pool room or the desk at Mar-a-Lago. And if that's what the FBI found, it's kind of hard to imagine what they might not have found. DOJ says it's imperative that they keep searching through the documents to see what still might be missing. Trump's legal team has the weekend until 10 a.m. on Monday to respond to this appeal, saying, cut it out. We don't need a special master. It's going to be interesting to see how Judge Cannon rules, because right now, Team Trump really needs a legal win. And I say that because in another Florida courtroom today, they were handed the equivalent of a legal smackdown. Judge Donald Middlebrooks is the newest judge that might certainly be on Donald Trump's hit list because that judge released what can only be described as a 65-page roast, a roast of a lawsuit that Donald Trump filed against Hillary Clinton. The judge even called it a political manifesto. Back in March, Trump filed a nearly 200-page accusation, the lawsuit accusing Clinton, uh, also former FBI Director James Comey and former British spy Christopher Steele of the Steele dossier and others as well. He accused them of orchestrating, quote, a deep state conspiracy to tie Trump and his 2016 campaign to Russia. So Judge Middlebrooks uh, got a hold of it. He looked through it and he was not buying it. He wrote in his ruling, quote, most of plaintiff's claims are not only unsupported by any legal authority, but plainly foreclosed by binding precedent. What Trump's lawsuit lacks in substance and legal support, it seeks to substitute with length, hyperbole, and the settling of scores and grievances. So, ouch. <laughs> For more on that and the other investigations swirling around Donald Trump, I want to bring in Andrew Cherkasky. He is an attorney, a former federal prosecutor, and a former JAG lawyer. And wouldn't you know it, Andrew Cherkasky, the day that I get you back on here, I got a little breaking news that just actually dropped. We were waiting for the names of the special masters that both Trump and the DOJ were supposed to uh, submit to the judge as their choices for the independent you know, party. I love that it's supposed to be an independent party, but they both get to submit their choices. I have the choices. So I don't know if these people are gonna mean anything to you, but let me just go through them really quickly. For the Justice Department, these are there too. The first one is the Honorable Barbara Jones, Barbara S. Jones. She's retired, a judge from the United States District Court for the Southern District of New York. And then the Honorable Thomas B. Griffith, also retired circuit judge of the United States Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit. Um, and then on Trump's side, they submitted these two. The Honorable Raymond J. Deary, the former chief judge of the United States District uh, Court for the Eastern District of New York. And then Paul Huck Jr., he is a former Jones Day partner. And if I'm not mistaken, you'll have to correct me here. I think Trump has had other lawyers from Jones Day as well. Uh, Mr. Huck was also the former general counsel to the governor of Florida 
and was also deputy attorney general for the state of Florida. Does any of that mean anything to you or scream any, you know, headlines to you, those choices? Well, I think that they are all fine jurists, it seems, and, and they could potentially be fair people in certain circumstances. I do think that having uh, somebody from a law firm that previously represented you uh, could be a conflict of interest. Uh, ultimately here, I, I almost uh, have an issue with the logic. Why take the suggestion from the parties when if you select one of those people, the other party is going to feel like it's uh, somebody against them or unfair to them? So I think the judge probably should have just picked somebody on her own instead of taking some suggestions and then either creating animosity from the other side or totally going astray and picking somebody your, yourself in the first place. I think it's odd. Um, I, I mean, I don't know how you, typically a special master is picked. I just know that they are dispassionate and their job is critical, especially when lawyers' offices are raided and it's, you know, attorney-client privilege that has to be assessed. But okay, so those are the four. I don't think we're going to hear any big news about them because we have this appeal now. But let me go back to that Clinton business that dropped today, because to me that was also quite fascinating. Um, I want to read another part of the judge's ruling. It says, uh, the defendants call the allegations a series of disconnected political disputes that plaintiff has alchemized, love that word, um, into a sweeping conspiracy among the many individual plaintiff believes to have aggrieved him. The defendants argue as a fundraising tool, a press release, or a list of political grievances, it has no merit as a lawsuit. I agree, the judge says. So here's the deal. Um, this is a, a, uh, a judge that was appointed by Bill Clinton. And I get it, the Mar-a-Lago judge was appointed by Trump. Everybody will, will attach to that right away, right? If you don't like the ruling, you'll attach it to the judge being appointed by the guy or the girl. <laughs> uh, but what should we make of that? Is that a terrible thing to say? Well, I think the Trump lawyers are, uh, should be having a bad weekend at this point. I mean, the, the ruling was definitely a blow to their credibility, uh, not just in the argument in this case, but I think overall. I mean, when you have judges calling out attorneys for making such incredulous arguments uh, about violations of the law, it really does do something not only to the case that they had uh, before that court, but I think it really does attack the overall credibility of the attorneys. Now, uh, for Donald Trump's part, he does have grievances with with Hillary Clinton and those associated with Hillary Clinton, because as he sees it, it was a long campaign in order to discredit him falsely. I mean, this is the whole Russiagate he thing here. And so he uh, does have an issue with that. And he has been uh, complaining about that for years. He's been looking for a way to get into court uh, to complain about that. But as we saw even recently, there was a prosecution of uh, attorney Michael Sussman, who worked for Hillary Clinton, and that didn't go anywhere. That end ended in an acquittal. So I think it's uh, probably probably the end of the road, although they swear that they're going to appeal this. I don't think that they have grounds. The judge didn't think that they have grounds. And I think that he was pretty embarrassed by the ruling today, although I don't think Donald Trump brings humility at any point, frankly. Listen, I have 10 seconds, but I need you to kind of give me this. Um, should anyone ever be annoyed with a, a judgment because the judge was appointed by one of the parties? Is that, is that the way our jurisprudence works in this country? Or should we all just take a big old step back from that? No, I think we need to take a step back from that. These are okay. trusted jurists who have uh, long credibility that they've built behind them. Did you hear that, America? Stop running down these judges because you think they were appointed by Bill Clinton or appointed by Donald Trump. Like, like let's at least let the process play out a little more before we all jump on it and, and judge. Ah, did you see what I did there? Andrew Cherkasky, thank you. Thank you for being here. Have a great weekend. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.